Is that okay? Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And I'm here with Nathan, as well as Alyssa behind the camera. And we are out live driving the 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. Now if you've never been part of our live drive before, or if you're watching this after the fact, once a week we try to get out and walk around the car and kind of show what we've got at the office that week and interact with the fans a little bit, talk with you guys. So we've got various people covering the chat, depending on whose camera, who's, you know, what we're showing, everything like that. So feel free to hit us up in the chats if you're watching live, any questions you might want to know. And if you're watching us after the fact, hit that subscribe button so you can see us live every week, typically Tuesdays, but, uh, you know, life's crazy. Alyssa and I were actually out last Tuesday driving the new Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye, as well as the Durango Hellcat down in Charlotte, North Carolina. So we weren't able to live drive. So we're doing it today and Nathan's down and around and he's helping us out. So we've been talking about Subaru in general. For those of you interested in the Crosstrek, this is the limited trim that features the 2.5 liter boxer motor, putting out a little extra horsepower. I believe it's 186 for this one. So still not a rocket ship, still paired to a CVT transmission. You can still get the Crosstrek in manual, but not with the upper kind of more powerful engine option. So we've been spending a few days with it and kind of talking about whether it's good or not. So initial impressions so far, Alyssa, what have you thought? Not much. Not I, much? I, I have not had some, <laughs> I need a little bit more time in that. Yep. Yeah. What yep. about general appearance? General appearance, it's, I, I would easily confuse this for an Outback. You're right. Subaru yeah. does kind of have a, a brand face going yes. and sort of a yep. brand style. Yep. Also similar to the Impreza. Also similar to the Legacy, they're all kind of starting to morph together. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Nathan? What do you think? Oh, it looks good. Comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't like the CVT. No? No. Yeah, I agree. That is one of the weak points that we'll see from behind the wheel. I do kind of like these wheels. They're a little bit like kind of off-roady looking. Got some of the black black deal going on. And, they look uh, like razor blades. They kind of do. You're right. <laughs> That's a good way to describe it. You can see we have gotten it a bit dirty already doing the Winding Road POV test drive. Took a little off-road and that allows me to talk about our donations for this chat, for this uh, live stream, I should say. So if anyone wants to do super chats or donate to us via the cash app, hashtag daily motor, if we get up to $10 donations total for this entire live stream, we'll take the Subaru cross track and do a little off-road and throw it through some mud puddles. I know some just down the street that we can go through. And if we get up to $20, we'll throw Alyssa behind the wheel and see what she thinks. And that's a little extra meaningful for this one because the last Subaru she drove, she actually got her very first speeding ticket, one and only. <laughs> and part of that is due to the CVT transmission in the Subarus. They just make speed in a weird way. And we had the big 3.6 liter turbo engine. Was that a turbo? I think the 3.6 liter might be naturally aspirated. I'm drawing a blank now. Uh, in the Outback. So this would be her her, uh, her redemption period <laughs> if we get up to dollars Hopefully, $20. man. <laughs> and for every dollar we get donated, we'll beep the horn. Yes. Yep. All right. Um, I've got a little... I've decided $30, you guys get to decide what I get to do. Just anything? Anything. Nathan's just sacrificing himself to the live yep, stream? Yep, I am sacrificing myself. You gotta be careful, we're talking about YouTube commenters here. Yeah, so come up with savagery. Mm -hmm. Speaking of comments, we have anybody up in the chat yet? Oh, uh, we have two people. We have, mm, I'm probably gonna butcher this, but. Is it Moran Samandi? Yep, it is. Yep, <laughs> we know that guy. Yep, <laughs> says hi, hello. Um, we have He's Yas, our tech master. Yas. Hi, y'all. Yeah. Cool, dude. Those are some of our OGs. They've yep. been here for most of the... Uh... Welcome, guys. Yep, so uh, let us know what you guys think, Moran and, and Yas. Uh, <laughs> Subaru fans, Subaru haters, where do we stand here? I think you and I also did a live drive of the WRX. Yes, we did. I think that was the last Subaru. I remember that. Yep. Yep. That was the uh, that was the live drive where we kept on making a bunch of jokes about uh, vaping and flat bills of course, and that's all. What WRX <laughs> yeah. Yep. So coming around the front here, nice little. It's just kind of a little compact grill. <laughs> it's so tiny. Look at yeah. the attention to detail on it. Though you got all. Of, it's like a diamond pattern. You're right. It's not like just detail. a flush, yeah. flat. Got the little chrome. It's got, got like a little silver and chrome mustache here. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And. I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of Subarus, but I all, always have loved their badge. You know, you mm -hmm. got that kind of carbon fiber looking pattern inside the in badge the blue, with the blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, this is one of the first live drives we've had in a while where it's not either super windy or super cold or raining right. or a bunch of weird noise going on. Right. This is, uh, this is actually quite nice. It's really nice. There's no wind. Yeah. Yeah. Crossbars here, you can put your bikes or your snowboards or whatever 
cool off-roady stuff you do as a Subaru owner in there. Coming around to the back. Very easy to open tailgate. I appreciate that it's not powered. So many mm -hmm. crossovers and SUVs are going to powered tailgates these days. And this one actually just opens up nice and easy. See your ruggedized floor mat there featuring Subaru, lest you forget what you're driving when you go to load up the back. It's not that big though. It really isn't. I mean, no, it's a smaller, it's, like it's kind of supposed to bridge the gap between like your standard hatchback and kind of a full size crossover. Well, I know the Ford Focus, um, the late Ford Focus actually has a much bigger trunk space than this. You think so? Oh yeah. I don't know. This is, this is pretty decent it's size. It's a lot deeper. Ooh. Like yeah. deeper, deeper down. This is oh. very, well, very Well, it's because this needs to feature all wheel drive. So you've got you know, drive access back point. there and stuff. What's underneath? An actual compact spare tire, which you're seeing, seeing less and less often. Yep, but that's good in case you were out blazing trail and popped a tire. <laughs> All right, we got some comments here. We got... I'm gonna oh. take, a, take a look through them. All right. Yep. We got uh, Yas says, I like Subaru, needs more manuals and upper trims or get rid of the CVT. Agreed. Yeah, it's awful. Ron, it looks good, but the CVT makes it awful. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, Topher asks, what our favorite vape flavor is? <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't know because we're not middle schoolers. <laughs> <laughs> I love and that. Also, none of us own Civics or WRXs. Or Volkswagens. Therefore, yeah, none of us vape. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, Topher. Yep. We actually uh, don't Nathan, smoke wanna, anything. So. You got anything uh, in the um, back? I mean, I can fold the seat could down. get in it. Patented daily motor uh, lie down mm. test. Now, how easily does this thing come out? Because I've actually, experienced these to be. Easy. You just Let's say little... I'm your dog. <laughs> could you camp back there? Yeah, high schoolers pay attention right now. <laughs> you are in a certain relationship. Okay, goodness. <laughs> different di different priorities here. I uh, guess, man. <laughs> gotta address the, all the people here. Um, it's fine. It's a. You, you couldn't know, lay down flat though, right? Try try laying down flat and see how much your feet stick out. You're about five foot ten, I think. Yep. Let's see. I will put my head right up against the seat. So you would not actually be able to camp and keep your feet at yeah. the same time. Yep. You have they to, stick out quite a bit. You have to saw them off right about above the ankle. <laughs> yep. I, I think it looks uncomfortable, feet. honestly. I mean, it's not, not as bad as you would think. It's not a flat a flat bed back there. It does raise a little bit, of course, when the seats are down, not which that, is something that's... Not that tall, though. I remember, I remember my black 2007 Focus was a lot taller than this. Hmm. Mm. What I've noticed are grocery hooks. Perfect. On either side. So Nathan's thinking about high schoolers and their date nights, and I'm thinking about grocery hooks. <laughs> well, you know, it's good. That's what we that's what we feature here at Daily Motor is a lot of different priorities, a lot of different life backgrounds, so we can bring you all the perspectives. So this Let's I can see. actually even do one-handed. It's super easy to do. Oh wow. It goes right back that's into pretty place. Cool. And this can cover up your groceries or your suitcases or bodies or anything like that that you might have that you need. Oh. No, it's funny I mentioned high schoolers because I actually do know a girl with one, one of these. Looks just like this. Yeah. Um, a couple, a couple years older. But yeah. So. She like it? I think so. She's not that into cars, but. Okay. Um, now, Liz, if you want to go around and put up the uh, the seats, the, the, the seats. Oh, wait, I want I want her to demonstrate how easy it is. Here, Nathan's comments. Oh, wow, these are very light. Yep. Look at that. Super easy to that do, even if you awesome. if you had something in your other hand, yeah. you could easily fold that up. If you want to hop in and demonstrate uh, rear seat room. I want to do that again. <laughs> I, I normally hate this part on the live drives or any of our reviews, but that was actually pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And I'm actually, before you get in, I'm noticing with the sun the way it's at, it's kind of a cool pattern. It's going to be tough for the camera to really pick that up in the... Right. 720p but there's like a first of all it's got this orange stitching it's no it's yeah the orange stitching yep and the pattern that you're not noticing is perforation in that leather yeah and on the inside of each of these little holes is the same color of the stitching yeah and it's it's really cool because you can see it when you look at it from an angle but you can't see it when you look at it straight on because of how it's inside each of those little holes. Yeah. That's really pretty. It's nifty. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's subtle, but it also has a huge effect. Because mm -hmm. it's like, um, 
like a mirage kind of effect. Yeah. Really, really cool. I agree. Okay, I'll get in. Very we got comments. We got it says Yas has apparently sent us something in Cash App. Oh, what snap! That means. How much? I need to uh, I need to check real quick because I actually um, don't have I haven't logged into the Cash App. So Nathan, if you want to film Melissa talking about the back seat, and I Just will get logged in. Let me know when to honk. Careful them. because you're putting your hand over the mics. Oh, whoops! Don't yeah, don't do that. There you go. Cool. All right. Um. This is very slippery back here, and I don't know if it's my the material of my pants or whatever, but it's um it's slippery. But the back itself, it's not too like the it's not too firm. It's quite comfortable. The seat itself is quite comfortable. I really love this black and orange color tone. This this color combination is really very pretty, and it's striking and yet still subtle enough so I like that a lot um what else oh it actually has a headrest that goes up and some simple little cup holders with, with just some little rubber bits on it to keep that drink secure it's quite simple back here but I also think it's still effective is there anything else that comes out it looks like this is just some plastic that there's no extra things back here, no USB ports, no USB-Cs or anything. Um, quite simple. We do have a little pocket back here with our water bottle in it, but there is not one over here. Um, we do have some, cup, oops, sorry about that, we do have some cup holders right here. But other than that, some faux carbon fiber looks on the side with more of this perforation. We do have an update. Yas sent us $5 in the cash app. Doubling that for ten dollars, so we will be going off road with the nice. Subi, cool. and we will be giving it ten honks as we uh, as we drive around. Oh right. boy! <laughs> we'll we'll do them right before we leave because I don't want to be obnoxious while we're parked here. Okay. Yeah, this is a business park. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Yas. Appreciate Thank you. It. Helps us out a bunch. That'll pay for gas for the fly drive. Nice. If I could borrow the camera real fast. I wanted to talk about some interior interior quality. I just noticed. Yep. So everything in this interior is very nice, except I noticed the center stack. I haven't spent too much time in here, but this is very, very cheap feeling plastic, if I'm as nice as possible about it. It's up here, around here. You don't really touch it. The buttons themselves are, they feel very nice, but this, very scratchy, very hard, hard, bad feeling plastic. But it's also a little bit durable. Mm -hmm. If you're coming in here with, right. you know, with your dogs, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not tearing apart the uh, the side wood paneling or anything. That's true, but all the paneling is leather, very nice, and this is my pretty much one of my favorite parts of the car. And I don't think dogs are gonna be walking here that much or around here. They shouldn't be, but you never know. Yeah, they could have traded a little bit, maybe some more durable materials there and some nicer material materials there. But that's my opinion. Um, I want to say thanks to another name here, Be Beladia, Beladia, Beladia J said she started watching, or he, the person started watching the channel because of the sound system comparison videos. Thanks for tuning nice. in. Glad you found them. Uh, what car, what cars have you really enjoyed watching <clears throat> the sound system tests for and what would you like to see? So we know coming mm -hmm. out in 2021 and the Moran points out, uh, or sorry, Yas points out that they wish, he wishes Subaru would at least offer a sunroof with the manual transmission. And that brings up a point of a lot of manufacturers are like, no one buys manuals anymore. But at the same time, they offer them only with like the basic setups. So you, if you want to get anything nice, if you want to get safety features or sometimes like serious radio or stuff like that, you, you can't get the manual. And so then they go, oh wow, it's kind of like that meme with uh, Eric Andre shooting Hannibal Burris and they're like, uh, you know, it's like manual manual transmission cars, and they're like, why doesn't anybody buy them, you know? Because <laughs> they're all just simple, and you can't get exactly what you want. That's interesting. Ron asks, why only one rear seat pocket? I have absolutely I no know. idea. You no can idea. see there's one on this side, but not one over there. Maybe cost-cutting. Maybe they decided only the driver wants to reach back and <laughs> get into that, which, I mean, fair, but sometimes... I, yeah, that's fair. You know, I've never Two's really... better than one. I've never really used those rear pockets ever at all. Right. Even growing up in our family car, we've never really used those. So okay. 
Yeah, I can see why there's only one. Right. Nathan, you want to come back and, and try the rear seat as someone taller? Sure. Yas, we will get to the infotainment system here shortly. I just filmed the audio system test, so I can talk about that once we're up front. So, rear seat legroom, very good. Headroom for 510, very good. How's the seat recline? Um, there is a seat recline, there is no seat. No, but just like, how is it like? Oh. Um, is it's it actually a pretty thing? comfortable angle. It's not too far back, too far forward. It's, it's fine. I agree. Everything yeah. back here, seats are a little firm, but comfortable. Mm -hmm. This is something minor, but I appreciate. The bottom of the cup holders back here are grippy. So if you put oh, something in there, it's not gonna rattle and it's not gonna slide around as much. A little disappointing though. Let's, oh, actually that does fit. Yep. This is an S10, it does fit in here. Yep. And it does grip, it doesn't move around. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Volvo's and Mercedes GLS are considerably better. You're right, those are some of the f best sound systems that I have reviewed. They're also a lot more expensive. That is true. <laughs> Although it's not some of the Volvos. I'll give that to you, Liz. Okay. All right. Coming on up to the helm. As Nathan was showing a little bit, you still got a lot of this nice orange contrast stitching. Some of this kind of neat just like textured plastic, some of this perforated leather material. Pretty, uh, pretty above average to above average. Mm -hmm. I do think this piano black is going to scratch after a lot of ownership, like Nathan was mentioning, some of this cheaper stuff. But the important things, the things you touch regularly feel good. The, the door handle, very solid, nice, big thunks, turn signals feel good. All the, the knobs and switches are solid, and the shifter is a very solid thunk. And you do still have a manual parking brake, so if we, <laughs> if we had this in the winter, we could do some e-brake slides. <laughs> yes. Okay, you know, this is kind of weird. It's very, like, just strange pet peevish, but the, the, what do you call this? The sun visor sits, like, very far back and out. So, like, if you look at this one, list, it just kind of looks like an afterthought. Oh. It's not, like, nicely flush fit into the... I do notice uh, that. It's very random. Yeah. It's not it's even a complaint. It's also really incredibly thick compared to others, and it's it's not as wide. No. no they it's actually quite small. Don't have as much headroom up here. I don't know what that's supposed to do. So... <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't just extend, but... Right. Each manufacturer does their own things. And if you look back here, these are actually cameras and sensors for the lane keeping and adaptive cruise control. So if you block those, then you can't have adaptive cruise control. Huh. Which I found one time when I was doing a fuel economy test and had my GoPro sitting right there. Huh. Cruise control wouldn't work. I wonder if tinfoil would also work. Likely. <laughs> All right, let's fire it up. You can hear the two and a half liter start up. Here, wait. Do we got some comments? We got a comment that's specifically for the interior. Okay. Uh, Harsh Shah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've had Harsh yeah. before. Uh, he says, or she says, um, don't you think the Subaru interior designs are not in harmony? Mm -hmm. No single personality? Oh. I don't know. I, I, maybe on other models, I know what you mean with different color leathers and things like that materials, but I think this one's actually pretty cohesively designed. Yeah. You have this nice flow from the door into the center IP out around that way. You've got pretty much three predominant materials. You have the, the dark leather, this kind of more silvery bit, mm -hmm. and then some, a little bit of piano black. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Nathan? Uh, I have to agree with Harsh. Really? Um, you think it's not very cohesive? I always think this think this about all Subarus and actually more of the modern ones. The older ones they felt a little bit more harmonious as Harsh would say. But, um, yeah, I don't I don't know what it's trying to be and that's my issue and I feel like that's probably where um, Harsh is getting at too. I like, it doesn't what is it? Is it a lot more luxurious or is it more economic or because you got really nice materials in lots of places but then well, other times you got really bad materials and what do you think i think it's trying to marry the two yeah the economic feel um with the luxurious feel i mean what you said before earlier like where it matters the things that you were going to touch daily if you drive this every day whenever you do drive it those things are higher quality than others and they're able to sacrifice some of that and sacrifice the price of the vehicle itself so you're not paying such a high price for things that you might not necessarily need. Yeah. 
Fair enough. Um, Harsh actually commented again. He said, I said that because you look at the center dash, things are different sizes. Oh. Eh. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I suppose if you're not very used to that upper screen, which mm -hmm. is kind of confusing, you have to control it with this info button, you wouldn't necessarily know that right away. Uh, there are a few, it is a little bit busy, but the Subarus with the smaller screen, I think are better. I think that big screen that they have in the Outback and the Legacy, I don't think do any favors. Actually, I kind of want to have that out a little bit more for signal. Oh, okay. Um, so, I, I mean, to each his and her own, but I think it's a fairly straightforward design for someone who wants to kind of have a little bit of ruggedness and fun like form and function sort yeah. of meeting. Yeah. Um, we also got um, Myron. He, he Myron? asked... Could it could be Myron. We could be saying it. All these months. Mazda CX-5 or Crosstrek? <sighs> well, I feel like they're not direct competitors. I think this is a slightly smaller vehicle. This is more of a CX-30. Mazda CX-30. Ah. And if we were comparing it to the CX-30, I would take the CX-30. Yeah. Um, if, if you really wanted me to compare CX-5 to this, it's just... I mean, it's a CX-5. It's a better driver's vehicle. I get uncomfortable driving Subarus. Not like from a, like, ow, my butt's sore. Mm. But just things like when I was doing the highway fuel economy test earlier today. Every time you get behind a vehicle and the adaptive cruise control catches on, it beeps. Mm. And then every time that vehicle leaves or you leave, like you change lanes, it beeps again. And just silly little things like that that I just... Didn't, it, didn't that Infinity do that as well? The Infinity didn't, but something else did. Yeah. I don't know what it was. Uh, oh, Nissan? Yeah, the Nissan uh, Altima beat. One of those. Oh, no, not Nissan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nathan, Nathan and Nissan don't get along. <laughs> um, As for that CX-30, I remember oh, yeah. that being a really fantastic car because it drove so well. It was so easy to drive, but the only thing I wasn't crazy about it was the back seat was quite tight. That is true. This and is I'm a wondering... more usable vehicle for size-wise. So yeah. in that regard, it's a little closer to the CX-5. Yeah. Yeah, I think the back seat in this uh, Crosstrek is a little, little bit larger. I'll say if you spend more time driving, like just as yourself, maybe one or two people, and and you kind of appreciate like a good driving feel and everything, you got to go with the Mazda. If you spend more time doing stuff with your vehicle, moving things, moving people, going off road, getting if you care less about the driving experience and more about what you're doing to get like taking things there and getting yeah. there, then uh, then maybe the Crosstrek is better for you. Oh, that's a good point. Fun fact, uh, the Topher is actually a new owner, if you will, of a Mazda CX-30. So if any of you are here from the channel, a uh, little sneak peek preview that the Topher's wife is actually a new front-wheel drive CX-30 owner. And because they're married, I suppose the Topher is an owner as well. <laughs> so Harsh agrees with you, Charlie. Okay. He says the um, CX-30 is a lot more premium than the Subaru. Yes. Glad we can meet on something. <laughs> Although, if you're looking for off, like if you ever have to take your golden retriever to the dog trail, Subaru might be better to get through some of those undulations, puddles. Not only that, but they'd be less likely to tear up the interior on the back. We got that big, um, the mat that was on the floor and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I will say, as much as I'm not a fan of the CVTs, specifically in Subarus, there are some CVTs that are okay, especially like Hyundai with their intelligent variable transmissions and the chain rather than the belt. Those are fine. I will say that I don't mind the CVT as much in these Subarus that are not turbocharged. I think the worst are when it's both turbocharged and continuously variable transmission because then the the engine gets going and the, the transmission starts gets, to gets going and then this turbo kicks in and then it's kind of this weird mash of a whole bunch of different surging. Whereas at least in this one, it kind of just gets up and gets going. It's not the most pleasant to listen to. It's not the most linear, but it's not as bad when you're dealing with the natural aspiration. So I'll just pull off here uh, away from the stop sign and kind of just give it even throttle and we'll see how it handles. 